podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello, I'm your host, Les Bubka. Welcome to Anxious Black Belt, a podcast that focuses on karate, mental health, and everything in between. If you enjoy our content and would like to support us, best way to do that is to listen to another episode, share with your friends, and leave us a review. All this stuff helps the mysterious algorithm to introduce our podcast to new audience. Thank you for joining me, and let's listen to the episode. Hi guys, so today is going to be a short one, as um, my guest couldn't make it, so <clears throat> we had to terminate that and um, I went without a podcast. So, as today I've been uh, teaching with Don Kame Sensei, and had an amazing seminar, um, as always with Don, uh, I'm going to be talking about a structure and power generation, and I think here it might be a bit of a sensitive stuff. Uh, my view of this is a little bit different than usual, and uh, I think that all the structure and um, setup for strikes in in karate is a little bit of a misunderstanding, and um, it needs to be looked a little bit different. So, start from beginning. I believe that uh, kata is a more of a grappling uh, system and with addition of strikes. As we do look at it the stru structure more fitting in the grappling situation than a striking and let me explain why. So if you look at striking a uh, lot of you had the instructors and you can see that online pointing out that your elbow needs to be turned out, your shoulder needs to be relaxed, your lats have to be engaged, you have to have a body forward, leaning down and all this stuff and, and it fits it perfect when you're doing it in a static one punch, one kill. So you hit Makiwara, you drive through that Makiwara, Alim alignment is great, you've got the support, your hips are pointing forward, um, and the alignment is great, you've got that power delivery in one punch. Uh, it's kind of difficult to explain it with a without a video. Uh, the video from uh, this section will be on uh, Patreon, available for a uh, for supporters and it's gonna be a bit better explained but if you are in striking uh, we will work on different system than a structure I call it a dynamic power uh, development so you'll be relying more on a fascia system so one strike preloads the other one and you flow with the body so that system can be explosive and elastic right if you go with a static setup that everything needs to be perfect for a strike uh, there is no time to do a consecutive few strikes and move right it needs, there's no time there's no time for your brain to process all the information and we done today a little bit of a test so the test gonna look like this you can do it either on a wall or on a partner you're gonna put your fist against the wall lean on it find the perfect alignment as we do on makiwara so elbow down hips forward find yourself if you move your hips the power gonna be running and leaking away so if you move your hips too much it's gonna try to push you through the shoulder i think there's some video somewhere online uh, me doing this and this is fine you can do that with the perfect execution with one punch but if we move that into the dynamic structure so let's say you want to do three quick punches and there's no time for that alignment because when you're hitting stuff you need to already drive the other one and therefore there's no time to set up everything perfectly your brain doesn't have a time to align everything you need to pull already into uh, other motion and for me, uh, <clears throat> the angles and speed beats power, maybe because I'm small and I cannot develop that support with the body mass that my bigger friends. 
Um, so I rely more on uh, movement power and explosive power where I don't have to set up to a, such a perfect alignment. I'm just hitting and um, executing strike after strike after strike from the right angle that gives me the advantage because I'm faster. Um, but when we get into a grappling, then all those parameters can be done. So when I'm pushing against somebody, I'm holding them, then I am able to set the elbows down, my lats in because I'm holding the structure. There is time for all those alignments, movements, and the whole situation is a little bit um, slower. And if you look on the BJJ, you on the floor, then everything is about the structure, right? Because you've got a time. So I'm using all those methods within a timeline. So striking, there's no time for a proper alignment frame. You need to move dynamically through the space and time. And I need to find the right angles to execute the strikes. Um, in grappling, I've got a little bit more time so I can set up, prepare uh, with the structure and frame. So block people and then you know you're pushing something uh, really heavy you're gonna lock those elbows down in because then you've got that power you're gonna drop your body weight you're more in the kind of zenku tsudachi pushing against or blocking somebody to push you so you've got the time and then the fight on the ground is even slower so you've got that time to fix the posture things the alignment things everything but it's not as dynamic as standing up if that makes sense the other thing we covered today it was the flexibility of the spine right i think this is a misunderstanding in karate as well um somebody heard somewhere that you need to have a straight spine in certain positions and that kind of went like a chinese whispers and went into you need to have a straight spine all the time uh, fighting with a straight spine is a bad idea because you lose the flexibility, you lose the speed, and your chin is up for the strikes. In boxing, you've got the movement from the spine moving around, giving you that mobility and speed. In wrestling, you've got the elastic spine, but super strong, so you can use that explosive power in a different range and different different movements and different positioning. Yet you've got that crossover with the um, straight spine. And in certain positions, you have to have that straight spine to execute the strength of your legs and connect with your partner and defend yourself. So best example we've done today is to go d dive under the arm and put your head behind the arm. If you are very relaxed, people gonna be able to do a and choke the guillotine choke because they can reach behind there's nothing blocking it but if you stiffen your spine up and push against their shoulders then they cannot reach and i think this you know somebody was teaching it to people and said you have a stra stra straight spine here and it was either mistranslated or seen wrong or heard wrong and been lost the meaning within the years going by by karate in kind of evolve into the straight spine and i think the same thing happened with holding the punches um, so people can show you the techniques it was working on a reflex that if you cut somebody unexpected that that limb is staying frozen for a split second so you can grab it and manipulate it but then with the time it was exaggerated exaggerated and now we've got the frozen karate i call it that hands are sticking out and then people get go and and do million techniques around it and as we've been discussing today with um, also mary stevens and lee mulan um, that you see the positioning in pictures of funakoshi when he's doing leg pick and there's apparently two versions that one shows that he's not fully extended and throws people and there's the one with the more pictures showing that flexible spine to the street stiff spine when he's taking people down with a kind of a turn so for me importance of flexible spine uh, is priority uh, 
I have to be able to move around cover height plus have a power within different angles so I'm going to be grabbing I'm going to be pulling and kata shows us that with a different changes of a uh, positioning so we're going down up forward backward because the kata leaves in transitions between the positions right so I'm going from kokutsu dachi leaning back from uh, position to a leaning forward position zenkutsu dachi and with that I'm going from a flexible spine to the stiff spine when I'm pushing a partner forward and picking his leg up but I need to break their structure my structure needs to be intact and for me being a smaller person very important is to be mobile and be able to move to the blind spot or behind them right I don't want to be a front in their uh, power range or power envelope if you prefer I need to be outside on the side um, another thing we'll cover today on the seminar was to work with a partner or um, opponent on a tactile basis so I'm feeling in close contact I'm feeling where the power goes in so I can in get in get out move transfer my body weight shift trap them depending on the situation the other point we covered today is to not be obsessed with the techniques yeah have an open mind if one thing doesn't work you need to have a instant transition to something else right um i cannot be stuck in the mindset that i have to execute this i have to execute this it doesn't work i swiftly move to something else so i need to have that fle brain power flexibility to not be a slave to the movement and the technique you're going to be flowing right um I prefer to have uh, three favorite katas which I'm working on and they're kind of in the same line of thinking so they don't contract against each other they just um, complement each other so uh, you have to have a system for yourself that fits your body structure your mindset and your ability physical abilities right there's no point doing a for me something that will be not working for me so like say uh, long strikes um, i've got a short arm so for me getting in exchange with somebody who is taller which is 90 percent of people is not a good uh, idea to do that i need to be able to move around be flexible get where i be in a comfortable range for me but not comfortable range for them so it's kind of middle short distance or or a little closer to them than a long range somewhere where they feel uncomfortable right um was showing his way of collapsing the structure of the opponent which works fantastic and kind of ties up with what i was showing as well so we we cover a lot of a uh, sensitivity drills where we responding to the opponent is he pulling us we're going towards him if he's pushing us away we drag them with us um, so you have to work on that kind of sensitivity drills connector drills and changing the body weight and orientation towards the um, your partner overall I think it was a great seminar like I said I love teaching with Don and I think everybody liked it we had a good feedback um, we're gonna have another seminar in October where we're gonna expand to do that and um, I need to work on uh, expressing myself better I think I explained it better with movement than just talking to you guys now it might be not super clear but like I said you can watch the video I'm gonna try to post something on the YouTube as well explaining that free level thinking for me so in striking I'm working with a elastic explosive power <clears throat> structure is not so important close quarters standing grappling structure and flexibility is the key and on the ground obviously i want to from a point of view of karate i want to get up as soon as possible but the framing and structure is the king that allows me to get out and get up and uh, move away so 
this is kind of a replacement episode uh, it wasn't the plan I'm recording it really really quickly um, I hope that make a little bit of sense if you've got more questions um, just ask in the descriptions or drop me an email recently I've got a lot of emails from people asking very interesting questions and have a lovely conversation so I always enjoy this stuff and um, again if you would like to support the show please listen to another episode share with your friends and subscribe and please leave the review and um, I'll be checking out next week coming up with few uh, interviews I hope that's going to be very interesting for you I've got few great people and um, people who you chosen to be on the show luckily they agreed and we will see how it goes I hope I'm going to be able to ask them good questions have lots of fun and you're going to be enjoying it thank you very much again for your time and support until the next one well done for listening to all of it um, you are a superhero thank you very much for your support and if you could leave us that review on a podcast platform that would be amazing uh, i appreciate your time i appreciate your support and i wish you all the best until the next one sports social podcast network